Hi everyone, this is Summer with Done Naturally. Welcome. Stop looking at your phone. Do not watch the clock. These two things can help you greatly achieve more sleep and feel more rested. How? I'm gonna tell you. So in the early postpartum period, your baby is feeding all the time. And many of those are in the nighttime when normally you'd be sleeping. So this is a hard adjustment period for you. And babies need those nighttime feedings. Those are not going away. If you've paid attention to my channel, you will see how vital and necessary those nighttime feedings are. But you're exhausted. Every parent is tired in the postpartum period. We are sleep deprived and we are trying any way to get any more sleep we can. Five, 10 minutes here and there, so necessary. So I'm gonna tell you a story with one of my sons, and I can't remember which one because mommy brain is permanent. One of my children, um, they were under six months, I can't remember how old they were, but they were certainly still feeding frequently. They were nighttime feeding, and possibly it was a growth spurt, but they were nursing every hour, every hour and a half, every two, sometimes like it seemed endless marathon feeding where they'd nurse for 15 minutes, fall asleep for a half hour and nurse for another 10. And of course, you're trying to get sleep during that time and you're feeling tired. And what was I doing? Every time he would wake up, I would look over at the clock and then I would nurse. And then when he was done, I would look at the clock and I would do a calculation in my head. I would do, okay, that was 22 minutes of eating. And he fed, one hour and 15 minutes ago. So if I fall asleep now and he doesn't awake till this time and you're doing like brain processing in the middle of the night, which guess what? Keeps you awake. It's not good to do. I don't know what made me change it, but at one point I took my alarm clock and I turned it around backwards. And I realize now nobody has alarm clocks. You guys have these. But I turned around backwards so I couldn't see what time it was. I kid you not, the amount of rest and the amount of sleep I must have gotten after doing that was incredible. I felt like a whole new person. And after that, never turned my clock around in the middle of the night. Absolutely not. I didn't want to know what time it was. I didn't need to know how long he was feeding. There was no reason to figure out when he fed from the last time at all. It was incredibly freeing. So I challenge all of you, I want you to try this. Put your phone on the opposite side of the bed. Charge it in a different room. If you can resist the temptation and it's next to you, do not pick it up. I know there are apps out there that everyone is logging when the baby feeds, when they start feeding, when they end feeding. It charts it all. And you're in that app. And the second you pull that phone up, bright light happens. There's plenty of documentation out there showing that when you have bright light at night, it prevents you from falling back to sleep, from feeling rested and from um, restorative sleep. So that, number one, don't do that. Number two, your brain is doing way too many calculations in the middle of the night and that keeps you up. When you have a healthy, thriving baby that's growing well, peeing and pooping, there's absolutely no reason to be keeping track of when they fed, how long they fed, frequency of feeding, none of that at all. You can stop. Now, that was hard for me to do. I was and maybe still type A, but my children make me now far less that way, just naturally because everything's a little chaos now. But I did that, especially with my first. I wrote down every feeding time, 1.32 and then I wrote 12 minutes, and then I wrote 2.06 2 p.m. And to the minute, none of those numbers are very important when you have a healthy baby. It doesn't matter if they fed eight minutes, six minutes, 12 minutes, 15, 17. When it's important to be keeping track like that, we have an at-risk baby, we have a preemie, we have an IUGR baby, we have an SGA baby, we have a baby born to a diabetic mother. And usually those babies need waking. We have alarm clocks to help us wake up, to wake the baby up to feed. When you have a baby that's feeding like marathons and waking a ton, you have a healthy baby. You don't need to be keeping track like that. Think about how freeing that would be. Given this, you will also learn to trust your baby, trust yourself, 
and look at breastfeeding in a more global way, which is a healthier way to look at things. It is so easy to get trapped inside those numbers. So easy. I've been there. But please trust me that when you let go of those numbers, it is phenomenal. Your brain is rested. You are looking at the baby overall. You are trusting that they're feeding when they need to and trusting that they're getting enough and counting those diapers. That's an easy thing too. You don't literally have to mark them down. You can, if your baby's pooping a lot, you don't need to keep track. If they're peeing at after, you know, every feeding or every other feeding or so, they're getting enough. So that's not something you need to numerically keep track of. But seriously, stop getting in the app and looking in your phone in the middle of the night. Don't do it. Even extend that to the daytime. You have a healthy baby, it's gained their birth weight back, they're peeing, pooping, growing. No more need, you guys, seriously. I know it might be hard of you for some of you that have type A personalities, I get it. But take me up on that challenge, try it, okay? If you like, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you wanna see more, and I will see you guys some other time, bye.